Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green aggro deck featuring the full playset of Unnatural Growth as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 5 man enchantment from Midnight Hunt says at the beginning of each combat, that also includes the opponent's turn, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. So an incredibly powerful effect if you already have somewhat of a board presence, plays very well with trample creatures and with vigilance creatures, because the effect also applies in the opponent's turn, we can play offense and defense with a very large creature. And then looking at the rest of our deck, it looks pretty similar to lots of the mono green decks that are out there. At one mana we've got Blizzard Brawl, supported by 24 snow lands in the mana base, as a removal spell, allowing us to fight an opposing creature, giving our creature plus one plus so and indestructible until end of turn, as long as we control three or more snow permanents. Then at 2 mana, full playset of Werewolf Pack Leader, a 3-3 with Pack Tactics allowing us to draw a card if we attack with 6 or more power, and then for 4 mana can turn it into a 5-3 Trampler, which can also play very well with the Unnatural Growth, attacking for 10 points of Trample damage. Then we've got Ranger Class, which generates a Wolf. On the second level, if we pay 2 mana, we get a plus 1 counter on an attacker, and on level 3 it can start generating card advantage, allowing us to play creatures off the top of our deck. Then we've got the full playset of Lotus Cobra as our 2 mana accelerant of choice. The reason we went with Cobra over Sculptor of Winter in this deck is that it allows us to potentially attack with a 4 powered Cobra the same turn we play Unnatural Growth thanks to the extra mana from Landfall. And then we also have 2 copies of Inscription of Abundance to complement our 4 copies of Blizzard Brawl as an extra removal spell. Can either fight, put 2 plus 1 counters on a creature, or gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures we control, which can also combo nicely with Unnatural Growth, as we can cast it after we double our creature's power to gain even more life. And at 5 mana we can kick it, in which case we get to choose all 3 modes. Then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Old Growth Troll, one of the better creatures to synergize with our unnatural growth, allowing us to attack for 8 points of trample damage, and when the troll dies we also get to enchant one of our lands and then sacrifice the enchantment to generate a 4-4 troll token, which we can also potentially copy with our Asika's Chariot, still one of the best cards in standard, the 4-4 legendary vehicle, when it enters is joined by a pair of 2-2 cat tokens, crew cost is 4, and when Chariot attacks we can create a token, that's a copy of target token we control, so we can start copying cat tokens, troll tokens, or even the clue tokens that we get from Briarbridge Tracker, a 2-3 with Vigilance that when it enters lets us investigate, generating a clue token which we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, and as long as we control any sort of token, the tracker gets plus 2 plus 0, so 4-3 with Vigilance essentially, that also plays very well with our unnatural growth. And then we also have two copies of Kazandu Mammoth, can play it as a tap land or as a 3-3 creature that gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn thanks to landfall. And then of course we've got our chariot, a natural growth and then a full place of faceless haven in our mana base as well. Despite having cards like old growth troll and a natural growth that require a lot of green mana, it's still worth it to have faceless haven as a creature land which shines in the control matchups and then 20 snow cover forests to complement our mammoth which can also be an extra land. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Probably pack leader into troll. Or we could turn 3 ranger class plus brawl if needed. Yeah, against swamp. Let's keep up the pressure. Blue-black. Some more controlling deck. Alright, let's get the troll out there. Or I could go Cobra plus Ranger class. Yeah, if they have counter spells, resolving Ranger class is pretty important. And then next turn I could play troll plus level up Ranger class. Be mana efficient. Yeah, that still seems like the play here. Don't want to overextend into a sweeper. Let's 
still nothing. So, Meat Hook Massacre, not really a concern at the moment. So it's basically the Shadow's Verdict they could have next turn. Otherwise at 6 mana it's Blood on the Snow. Yeah, I think we're just smashing and then... Probably leveling up Ranger class once again. I'll put a counter on the Cobra here. Is their opponent's all the way down to 5. And then our opponent explodes. So yeah, nice aggressive start. Opponent didn't have enough interaction here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Sadly can't keep a one-lander. This is also not ideal, but I'll try it. Keep track her double blizzard brawl. And hope to draw a two drop, essentially. Alright, another three drop instead. Probably hang on to Mammoth as a creature. Put on the green white. So we'll see. Alright, it's a Bant deck instead. Sentinel. So maybe a party deck. Interesting. Well, I think I'd still uh, track her here. And then I might decide to play a Mammoth as a land next turn. I do want to keep my clue to keep Tranker as a 4-powered creature. Yeah, Paragon confirms that they're on a party deck, so double Blizzard Brawl should be effective. Ooh, and a Chariot. So let's Brawl the Paragon. Although with my opponent stuck on two lands, killing Sentinels also potentially worthwhile. Yeah, sure, let's kill this Sentinel instead. And hit for five. Could have also killed Paragon, I suppose. But I'm probably better off cracking the clue and then next turn Chariots will grow the tracker once again. Unless we decide to trade it off, which is maybe not what we want to be doing when we have a natural growth in hand. Another Paragon. And no attack, put him maybe fearing a pump spell. Or wants to preserve their party types. So could already play a natural growth, but better to Chariot plus Brawl here. And then next turn growth can pump the entire squad. Still prioritizing killing the Paragon, as the creature types are more relevant for having a full party. And yeah, next turn, hopefully get to see your natural growth in action. Another Paragon, alright. They don't have any attacks. And even get to go Cobra into growth. Crew Chariots. And smash. Sadly didn't even get to see the unnatural growth trigger as her opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not an amazing hand. No turn to creature to play out. But on the draw, I might still keep this. As we do have a good mana base and two removal spells, so really any two mana creature we draw and we're in business. And there we go. Facing off against a pit fighter. So an aggressive red deck. Troll another amazing draw. Yeah, red decks typically struggle to get past these large green creatures when played on curve. They might have a burn spell. Alright, Stormseeker. 
probably pump Spitfighter, because I'm relatively happy to trade Pack Leader for Stormseeker, although then again, next turn I've got a, a troll I can play, which can block it, and we've got two fight spells, so I probably want to keep my creatures around. Especially now that we drew a natural growth. I should try to preserve my board presence. So I'll hit for three, play troll. Next turn, Tracker plus Blizzard Brawl, perhaps. Can potentially enable pack tactics. Opponent just concedes here. Troll played on curve is too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. We'll need to draw an extra green source for troll, and I guess two green sources for growth. So, could have a few mana issues here, but in the meantime I get to level up ranger class. We've got a blizzard brawl with three snow permanents, so can't complain. Shambling gas from our opponent. So black-green sacrifice deck. Alright, and now I can just play a troll on curve. That seems fine. Not really interested in trading the wolf. And then we're just a land away from casting our unnatural growth. Opponent Junt Colors. And a Chariot's another amazing draw. So a Troll can attack, play Chariot's. And yeah, if I draw an extra green source, this is kind of the ideal curve. We'll have to watch out for sweepers. A blood on the snow is a very real possibility. Alright, just a cobra for now. So opponent might be holding an answer for chariot, which I would like to keep around if possible. So the play here, probably level up ranger class. Do I want to fight anything? Not really. So, yeah, let's level up ranger class. Attack with the team, and then I'll pump one of the 2-2 tokens. And not expose the chariot. And then I want to play Cobra second main, potentially. The way they block here is going to be telling of what they're intending to do. Yeah, the fact that they made a treasure definitely implies that they have a sweeper they might want to cast. So I'm just going to pass it back, keep my Cobra. And then at least the troll dying means I get an extra mana, which will be helpful. Alright, it's going to be Frog Hemoth instead. So that's an unexpected twist. Well, a natural growth seems pretty strong here. And once again our opponent explodes before we actually see the doubling of a natural growth, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Probably turn to Cobra over Pack Leader. And then next turn I could play another Cobra, play a land, play a troll. Opponent with turn one Sentinel, so maybe a lower curve version. Yeah, we'll stick to the plan here. Uh, 
And then I think I'm okay trading Cobra with anything from the opponents. If I draw land, I'll have 5 mana, which is enough to play a 3-drop and a 2-drop, which is good enough. And this slows down the opponent's mana development. Do we see a chariot? It's going to be a Boreal Outrider instead. Alright, so they're leaning quite heavily on those snow synergies. No land, but can attack with Troll, see what happens, and then probably play another Troll. Advantage of playing Pack Leader is that I can maybe draw a card with Pack Tactics next turn. But this is more mana efficient. And again, with a land, we'll be able to track her plus two drop. Opponent's got her own pack leader. 4 4. Can trade for a troll. So the board's starting to stall out a little bit. Mammoth. Yeah, the Outriders putting in some good work. There's my land. So the trolls can still attack. Don't think I'm leveling up a ranger class, or am I? Having a 5-5 five five would be nice. But it doesn't spend my mana optimally here. So I think we just send the trolls, and then if they end up trading, I can maybe generate more mana with the enchantment as well. That's going to be a double block there, sure. Alright, so now I have six mana. I would like to maybe sacrifice the enchantment as well to make a troll token, so... In that case, play lands, play tracker, make troll end of turn. Opponent attacks. They get to draw. So they could have any number of pump spells. Question is, do we just try to race instead of trying to block and running into said pump spell? Yeah, I think we just try to race here. Don't want to run into a pump spell. Second main land and another pack leader. And a sentinel. Okay. So I can ranger class level up. And that will allow me to grow the tracker to attack past the pack leader. Does the Cobra want to attack too, perhaps? So let's say Pump Cobra attack with all. Then... Yeah, they could chump Tracker with Sentinel. It's still taking 11, so they would probably trade and then take 8. Whereas now, if I pump the Tracker, they'll chump it with a Sentinel and then take 8. Yeah, I guess forcing them to lose the pack leader is pretty nice. So they have to block with the sentinel. Still have a wolf on defense. Schedule to take eight. 
opponent could activate pack leader for plus two damage. So if they activate pack leader, they don't have enough to play inscription at two mana. Uh, they could play kicked inscription, however, which would gain them six life, as well as killing one of my other creatures. But even if they gain six, I think I would rather not be chumping here. Now they could have double inscription for counters twice, but from the way they played I don't think that's the case. So I'll take it. And a run and seven. Should be able to attack past that quite easily, so let's just send the team. And that's game. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is a little sketchy. If we draw Forest of the Top, if Cobra lives, then it's potentially quite powerful. But uh, even with a single forest, I'm only going to be able to play one troll, so I'll need double forest here. Yeah, it seems a bit too sketchy. Alright, this is better. And then I'll hang on to Faceless Haven and potentially go for Cobra into Chariots, turn 3. Facing Plains. Could play Pack Leader, but I feel like playing Cobra is going to be better. Alright, Rip Apart kills Cobra. And Apparition Exiles Pack Leader. But hopefully Chariot gets to stick around. It's your opponent on a red-white, more controlling build. And a troll's not a bad leftover. Alright, Courage is an interesting one. Pumping the Apparition. And then keeps up three mana. Not sure what to make of it. Might be trying to set up an ambush for chariots. Wanting us to crew it to attack past apparition and then they can somehow remove it. But in red-white, can't think of many instants that deal four damage. I guess there's like Demon Bolt, but they would have foretold that. Could Blizzard Brawl the apparition to clear a path but that also exposes me to getting 2 for one So, I think just screwing Chariot's fine. And we'll see what happens. Bowden takes it, and I'll play a troll. Not sure if the opponent is in the business of burning down houses. Doesn't seem like it. Alright, rip apart can destroy artifacts. Are they gonna make apparition a 4 4? Nope. Still keeping up 3 mana. So, yeah, I'm kind of intrigued. I would like to clear the apparition so I can uh, start sending in the cats but also don't feel like there's a need to necessarily pull the trigger on blizzard brawl when I can just send in the troll they didn't make it a 4-4 four four. so yeah let's just attack with the troll play tracker and kind of wait it out a little bit
because if there is a sweeper in my future, then killing the apparition with Blizzard Brawl also lets them wipe away the 2-2 two -two token that's left over. Whereas now a sweeper, at least I'll still have a 2-2 two -two to attack with. Aha, uh -huh, Quintorius, I see. So it's more of a spirit deck. And now the Courage out of the graveyard makes a spirit token thanks to Quintorius. Alright, so now things are starting to make more sense. And glad I still have Blizzard Brawl to kill Quintorius here. And then Troll or Tracker is a question. Probably Tracker. And then Troll, I'm fine to trade. Next turn I'll maybe think about sending in the cat tokens. So, no longer afraid of sweepers, really. So I'm okay committing another tracker. And next turn we can fire up Faceless Haven, attack with everyone. A Lunar Veteran, sure. And a Theorist. Yeah, opponent had some interesting synergies going on here with Quintorius and Flashback. But, uh... Let's fire up the Haven. Attack with all, and then I can still use the Haven to sack a clue token before it potentially trades. Hmm, I think my opponent meant to block the other tracker here. It's a slight misclick, but they still seemed very dead. Alright, so yeah, once again. Good to see our deck perform quite well. Of course, Mono Green, as most aggro decks, is going to be quite a bit better when on the play. Finding the Blizzard Brawl also makes a huge difference in creature matchups, but we did get to see a natural growth in action a few times as well, and a great way to break board stalls, especially in like a mirror match situation. So a card that has a place in these Mono Green decks, now, playing four copies can potentially run into diminishing returns if you draw multiples without enough creatures. So maybe the ideal split is like two unnatural growth plus two frog hemoths, which also have good synergy with a natural growth. Maybe play Ren and Seven instead. So there's definitely a lot of options within the mono green aggro deck. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.